It's a pleasure to welcome here Sir Christopher Frayling in Tallinn, Estonia today. Um, first of all, um, please tell us uh, why are we having you here in Tallinn? Why are we here? Well, we're, we're launching this new book on 2001, A Space Odyssey. And of course, it's the ultimate film about technology and the future and the promise of technology and innovation and design and all those things. And Tallinn is a centre for all those aspects of life, of design, of uh, technological startups with companies. Of uh, you, You've been called, actually I got this wrong the other night, I, I said you're the Silicon Valley of the Baltic and someone said, Baltic? <laughs> Europe? Come on. Silicon Valley of Europe. Skype invented here, etc, etc. So it's a, it's a, it's a high-tech environment with a real sense of promise about the future. And one of the things about 2001 is it's one of the very few science fiction films which has a positive view of the future on the whole. Most science fiction films have a world where it's been trashed and everything's gone wrong and there's acid rain and the city has collapsed and you rebuild it uh, from scratch, you know? Well here it's all about the continuity, 35 years from 1965 where they made it and um, so it's a, a sense of promise, it's a good place to be. You mentioned the future, uh, you've been in Tallinn for a few days. Um, do you spot the future here? <laughs> in the yeah, oh, it's a lovely buzz, uh, a lovely buzz uh, around the place. I mean, I went for a walk yesterday from the old town right across to uh, the, 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 the big shops, the big retail area, where there's still a lot of building going on. You've got this real sense of, uh, no, you, you belong to the future. There's no question, and you really feel that. <laughs> but you've also got all these traditions, uh, craft traditions, and the past, and the medieval old town, and uh, you know the art of the past, and the craft, and everything. So uh, yeah, I think you're, um, I think you've probably got it right. And uh, but as I walked into these new buildings going up around you, you know, you can hear as the, as the digging goes on, and then you you walk into a large branded department store, you kind of feel a new place is being built around you. It's very exciting that you know. Because in England, um, you know, we've got a lot of cultural capital, but everything is fairly traditional and you don't quite get the idea of a city being rebuilt, which is what you're getting here, I think. So, yeah, no, it's a nice buzz. You know a lot about film history. Uh, did you know that uh, Tarkovsky uh, used Tallinn Stalker. as a set for Stalker? Yesterday I did an interview on the sacred spot yeah. where Stalker was filmed and mm -hmm. I felt... I hope I get the inspiration of Tarkovsky. <laughs> uh, there's also an Estonian actor in Solaris. Right. And uh, so, yeah, there's a lot, lots of, and I think, I haven't seen it yet, but someone gave me a DVD yesterday of a science fiction movie mm. uh, shot in Estonia uh, a few years ago, and I'm looking okay. forward to seeing that when I get home. So, yeah, no, no, mm -hmm. not just uh, the fact of technological development, but the fiction as well mm -hmm. happens in Tallinn, so mm -hmm. that's nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, talking about um, uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, um, you mentioned uh, that it was about positive future. It uh, Except the computer, but that's another yeah. term. Um, now, quite a, quite a many years later, um, we are in 2014. Um, what do you think where we are today with this future? What was predicted in, well, in, 19, in, yeah. in mid, mid 60s? Mid 60s, yeah. yeah. Well, they got, like a lot of science fiction, they got a, something's right, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. What they got right was the commercialization of space travel. The film begins with getting on a Pan Am, remember Pan American, and that was a brand in those days, Pan Am space shuttle to go to the moon. Well, think of Richard Branson and Virgin mm -hmm. and the commercialization of space. That mm -hmm. they got right. Mm -hmm. They got a lot of the look right, you know, that uh, uh, spaceships actually look like 2001. And I think that's probably because the, the, the visuals of 2001 are so strong that the world begins to look like it rather than the other way around. Mm -hmm. Interaction with computers, voice-activated computers, computers mm -hmm. which almost pass the Turing test. In other words, their uh, artificial intelligence has developed mm -hmm. so much that they're almost like human beings. Mm -hmm. that, that also was predicted. So those things they got right. What they got wrong, I think, was, well, first of all, they picked the wrong brands. That You go up on a Pan Am <coughs> uh, flight, and when you get there, you eat in Howard Johnson's eatery. Neither of those brands survived till 2001, mm -hmm. <laughs> as it happens. They backed, two, but they backed some winners. Uh, you've got IBM, you've got the BBC, you've got things like that, but uh, those two they got wrong. But particularly, and you often get this in science fiction, that the technology is right, but the social change has completely passed them by. So there's no women in the spaceships, no idea of a gender balance. 
There's no multiculturalism. There isn't a black face in the movie. And the sense of how society developed into a much more diverse multicultural society with a strong emphasis on gender balance, by 2001, none of that appears in the movie. They all look like some strapping male, uh, you know, uh, beefy actors. So, you know, that they got wrong. But that's often the case in science fiction, that it's written by people who understand a lot about technology, like H.G. <coughs> Wells. Uh, mm -hmm. He, he wrote a, a film called Things to Come in 1936, where, mm -hmm. uh, which was set in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, 2036, mm -hmm. 100 years after it was made. Mm -hmm. And he gets it hilariously wrong. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. the, the society, but it looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. So the design is often right, but the social philosophy is very often wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and I think uh, that, that's true of, of uh, 2001 as well. Mm -hmm. But there's a very interesting thing we discovered when writing the book, that... Uh, you know, there's that famous moment in the film where the ape man, three million years ago, yeah. gets this bone and works out how to use tools. But the first thing he does is very destructive. He bashes a tapir and it dies. And then he starts defending his space. And then the rival mm -hmm. tribe of ape men come along and boom, 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 mm -hmm. and so, throws the bone in the air. And in slow motion, it goes like this mm -hmm. and turns into a spaceship. And how that's always been interpreted is a very positive image mm -hmm. of tool making ingenuity and tool making in ancient times right through till ingenuity and tool making in the space age mm -hmm. originally and we can tell this from the designs harry lang's designs for the film mm -hmm. it turned into a nuclear bomb right so mm -hmm. instead of a spaceship it's a nuclear bomb and not only a nuclear bomb it has the letters cccp on the side mm -hmm. it's a soviet nuclear bomb and then the camera goes round, and you get a Chinese nuclear bomb. You get a French one, a German one, and an American one. Mm -hmm. And in, orbit, in low Earth orbit, the, the Earth is surrounded by orbiting bombs. Mm -hmm. And you've got a voiceover saying, uh, we've kept the peace since 1945 by uh, nuclear uh, uh, sort of brinkmanship, mm -hmm. and let's hope it lasts, but it might not. Ba -ba -ba -bom. And the film begins. So it's really interesting. Originally, it was rather a negative thought that... It's three million years of weapons development, from the bone to the bomb. Uh, but I prefer the version that went into the film, where they're just spaceships, and it's just a, a hymn to ingenuity, and, and so on. So it's very interesting, when you look at the designs for this film, you find out all sorts of depths that you don't get just from watching the movie. Mm -hmm. It has been joked that uh, Stanley Kubrick invented Skype in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, sort of, a kind of clunky version of it. I mean, what happens okay. is they go to the space station and Dr. Floyd, the scientist, mm. goes to a photo, a, a telephone booth, rather like a public telephone, mm. puts in his credit card, dials up, and there's a picture of his daughter, and he's going to buy her a present in mm. outer space, and he wants to order it and so on. So you get a video phone and an interactive conversation, which is a bit like Skype.